Is finitude a jumping off point for appreciation? Well, that seems to be part of what William Shakespeare is trying to communicate to us in Sonnet 73. And if Shakespeare says so, then who are you to argue? Welcome to Strip Cover Look, where we squeeze the bigger picture of literature. I'm Adrian Fort, and we are here for another poetry discussion, which will appear, of course, in the poetry discussion playlist here on the channel. <clears throat> The poem in question today is Sonnet 73 by William Shakespeare, and it reads as such. That time of year thou mayest in me behold, when yellow leaves or none or few do hang upon those boughs which shake against the cold, bare ruined choirs where late the sweet birds sang. In me thou seest the twilight of such day as after sunset fadeth in the west, which by and by black night doth take away, death's second self, that seals up all in rest. In me thou seest the glowing of such fire, that on the ashes of his youth doth lie, as the deathbed whereon it must expire. Consumed, with that which it was nourished by. This thou perceivest, which makes thy love more strong, to love that well which thou must leave ere long. <clears throat> now, essentially what we have here is recognition of death, recognition of the finite nature of our time. In fact, what we have here, it goes a little bit further than that, in that it seems to be recognition of the finite nature of time for someone else. The speaker is speaking for himself, but it seems to be a recognition that um, someone else is privy to these changes as well. That time of year thou mayest in me behold, and then goes on to explain, essentially the fall and the winter. The fall and the winter being late in the year. And here, this thou perceivest which makes thy love more strong, to love that well which thou must leave ere long is saying, hey, because you recognize this in me, because you know that I will not be here much longer, it seems that it has made you steadfast in your love. It has made you love me stronger. This is real, right? We So, your dog gets older and you recognize it might be time soon. You're going to spend a few extra moments petting it before you, you lay down to bed. Your parents get older and you spend a little more time with them, right? You know this feeling. I, I talk about it a lot in uh, poetry discussions, especially on this channel, but there, I believe it's in Waking Up by Sam Harris. He talks about this <clears throat> understanding that if you're a parent, for example, someday you will pick up your child for the final time, and you will not know when that is. The last time you pick your son up, you won't know that it was the last time. Somewhere deep in the recesses of your mind, you will be thinking, ah, oh, this guy's getting so heavy, and you will not appreciate it for what it is. And you will not recognize it when it's gone. But death is something different in this, in this instance, right? This is not sudden death. This poem is about someone who is fading. Someone who, for whom the end is seemingly obviously near. Now, The recognition of death here from not the speaker, but the subject, the thou in question, 
the thou in question recognizes this death and it forces them into deeper contemplation about the beloved, the speaker, and is forcing them to realize that, yes, these feelings that I have, this feeling of love is real and I had better cherish it. But another thing that is necessary, in my opinion, to recognize about this poem is something that goes completely unspoken. That individual, the thou in question, saying, yes, I love you, and uh, you are dying, so I'm going, to, I'm going to try to cherish these moments even more. That person's getting older, too. So the recognition of the speaker's death is also, in part, an admittance that, yes, I am dying as well. And though I am dying, I am willing to follow you. My time here is not infinite. My time here is limited as well. So all of these moments that I spend loving the you in this, que in this poem is time spent that I am not pursuing anything else in my life, is time that I am not leaving you to find a younger lover, is time that I am not appreciating my own life while, uh, while I too am fading. Which raises the question of independence raises the question of solitude how valuable are these things being alone alone time personal growth personal development how valuable are these things in light of the life scale i think we've all probably been in that place where we have recognized some goal that we have some outcome for life that we wanted. It's a moot point. Never going to get there. That being the case, how much of your life do you spend still dedicated to that thing? Is it a lot? If so, what you're saying is, that thing is more important than my life. I am dedicating myself to something very much larger. The recognition in this poem seems to be that life should be enjoyed by the individuals living. These individuals are choosing the other in order to indulge in life. Not some mission, not some goal, but in the act of love. The last thing that I want to talk about here is something that we've gotten into a lot lately on the channel, talking about Robert Frost, talking about some of the Emily Dickinson poems that we have uh, decided to talk about recently, and that is the day-year-life scale. One of the things that pops up in the literature time and again, especially when we're looking at the metaphor involved in literature, is the morning and the spring are kind of the same thing. They're youth. The summer and the middle of the day are kind of the same thing. They are the time in life where the, where the getting has to be gotten. They are the time in life where you have to be working hard. The daytime. The summertime. This is when you are putting in the hardest of labor. This is when you're 20, 30, 40. Then there's the fall. Then there is the evening. The fall and the evening are comparable on the day and year scale. They sort of graft out to being maybe you're 50, maybe you're 60. This is when you should be reaping the rewards for the life that you have sown. You did all that hard work in the summer. You got to bring it all home in the fall. You did all that going out and tasking during the, the daylight hours. Now you come home and you have your glass of wine. Then there is the winter. Then there is nightfall. These are the later stages in life where the end is coming. The, 
the the winter being the turn of the year, the night being the darkness before a new day. However, on this life scale, there is no redemption, not in this world. This is where, why you will often have religious type stories set in winter. It is time for the renewal. It is time to be born again. That is all I have for this poetry discussion. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other literature lovers. If you find yourself here by chance but not design, literature is the only thing I talk about on this channel, dropping multiple videos every single week. There's poetry every Monday, and I hope to have you back for the next one.